All right, let's give you a little bit of an update on Jared Kushner. Um, a lot of people have a lot of feelings about this man. It's kind of a little horseshoe moment, actually. He has a new book coming out. It's called Breaking History. And uh, I've got a couple of reviews for you here that uh, not too impressed with this memoir of Mr. Kushner and his time in the White House. So first one is from uh, the New York Times, which has some amazing language in here. Let's go ahead and put this up on the screen. Okay, so the New York Times um, in this majestically written paragraph says, this book is like a tour of a once majestic 18th century wooden house, now burned to its foundations, that focuses solely on and rejoices in what's left amid the ashes, the two singed bathtubs, the gravel driveway, and the mailbox. Kushner's fealty to Trump remains absolute. Reading this book reminded me of watching a cat lick a dog's eye goo. <laughs> kind of amazing. Um, I have a cat and a dog. I've never seen that. You've one. never seen that I've happen. Seen they that don't happen. have that kind of relationship. No, they, they do eat each other's food though, which drives me nuts. <laughs> I'm not sure who's eating what and whether they've had enough. It's crazy. Uh, so but. you've got the the liberals not impressed with Kushner, and I think for good reason. Um, as a representative of the left, I will say we are also none too impressed with <laughs> impressed with Kushner in particular. I mean, of all the shameless cashing in and grifting off the Trump administration, he really takes the cake. Right. And the two billion dollars that he got into his investment fund from Saudi Arabia is truly, truly grotesque and disgusting and raises a lot of questions about if there was another Trump White House, who they would serve, whose interests they really would be serving, and also raises a lot of questions about what exactly they were doing last time they were in when they were giving Saudi Arabia absolutely everything that that country could possibly want, up to and including, you know, carrying water and covering for them with regards to Jamal Khashoggi. So we've got the libs, we've got the left. Mm -hmm. We also have Peter Navarro, representative of the right, who also despises Jared Kushner and his new book. Um, let's go ahead and put this one up. He titles his review, <laughs> The Clown Prince of Pennsylvania Avenue. He says, Jared Kushner did more damage to the presidency and the Trump agenda during his four-year reign of error at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue than anyone. Now, Peter Navarro and I do not agree on many things, but his uh, biggest beef with Jared is the way that he was one of these people that thought he could uh, sort of undermine what Trump ran on. Yeah, and now that's some, true. Yes, some of this, of course, has always been cope, because it's like, well, ultimately, though, Trump is still Correct. Trump. Like, he could have done what he wanted, but in Navarro's view, Jared was, uh, he says his neuter the boss role quickly became a source of friction between us. He believed that I, more than anyone inside the West Wing, could rile up the president to take actions that were, in fact, totally consistent with Trump's central campaign promises. But as this particular Wall Street transactionist liked to say, and it always made me cringe, that was the campaign this is reality. Um, my favorite part of this is he did a little, what he describes as a tongue-in-cheek sample day in the life of Kushner. He says, at daybreak, back channel his Chinese Communist Party handlers on the latest <laughs> in trade negotiations and thereby weaken the bargaining position of U.S. trade rep Bob Lighthizer. Mid-morning, help Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman evade any responsibility for the murder of Jamal Khashoggi, Khashoggi and thereby and Secretary of State Mike Pompeo into yet another paroxysm of rage. At noon, ping Israeli Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu on the latest in these peace talks and thereby keep NSA advisor Robert O'Brien like a mushroom in the dark heaped in Jared's excrement. Mid-afternoon, meet with the staff to discuss the latest developments in mismanaging the pandemic and see what else they can screw up. At sunset, he calls the vice president's chief of staff, Mark Short, to see what data they can manipulate and make it look like the pandemic is getting better. Afterward, he drops in the Oval Office for the fifth time that day to see the boss and tell him how great his polls look. Sounds so, right, based on everything that I've seen. Just a lot of uh, bipartisan feelings about Mr. Kushner yeah. here. Kushner may be the single most mediocre and yet powerful figure in modern American politics it's in a It's kind of time. extraordinary, right? I was trying to think back. There's a long history of screw-up aides, and I'm saying that nicely, who had major uh, impact on U.S. foreign policy, and he's up there. Colonel House, some Woodrow Wilson figures, uh, Harry Vaughn from the Harry Truman administration, uh, you know, going with Jimmy Carter, and anyway, there's a lot of people like Jared. Uh, they never really even reach the same heights of power as he did. Untold damage, not even on what Trump claimed he ran on, but I mean, on the tax bill, Saudi Arabia, one of the most shameless grifters in modern memory to ever like come to Washington. And one of the most egotistical figures who writes these shameless books celebrating his fake achievements. Um, and, you know, ultimately it's on Trump. Like this is, 
as you're saying, this is the cope that drives me nuts when Trump people are like, yeah, it's all on Jared Kushner. I'm like, yeah, well, Trump listened to him, okay? And he left, left him in the White House for four years. I went to Jared Kushner's office. It's right by the Oval, all right? So at the end of the day, he cared more about Jared than he did about Bannon. And a lot of people like Bannon can't really deal with that because they want it. They want to project things onto Trump of which he doesn't actually care all that much about. Like right. he's just a vessel for whatever everyone wants to project. Yeah, Kushner ends up being a perfect excuse for them. Yeah, of exactly. Why it didn't right. live up to whatever they if wanted. If he wasn't the there, the same thing would have happened. Gary Cohn would have done the same thing. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, exactly. And the fact that you know Trump ultimately is president. He did what he wanted to do in the administration, and the buck stops with him, as they say. Um, do you expect if Trump were to make it back into the White House, I mean, Kushner would be? Oh, he's coming back. Right yeah, back no, in. No right? question. J Jared has such a high sense of his ego, of his ability. I mean, that, that sample uh, day, that's real. That that actually is what he used to do every day. It's such a high regard for himself and his ability to, quote, solve problems and the amount of, uh, yeah, just he has an, an enormous ego. And look, Trump, at the end of the day, enabled him, never talked down to him, never really yelled at him. He was never really in the doghouse. He manipulated the media to his effect and got all of his aides fired. I mean, if you think about it, all of the chief opponents Navarro, I mean, part of this is frankly cope on Peter Navarro's part, yeah, which is definitely. that Navarro was outcast from the White House for like 18 months right. because of Jared and because of Gary Cohn and others who very easily you know, kept him out. So look, they ran it. They probably will run it again. I, I don't see any evidence to tell me that it just wouldn't be a redux of Trump 2.0. Yeah, I am a little bit fascinated by Kushner just because like you said, his mediocrity is so extraordinarily mediocre. Yeah. And then to end up with so much influence, like- I, I don't, it's it's yeah. mind-boggling. It's hard to wrap your head around. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.